pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Maniac. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a book review for you of a book that I finished late last night and one that I'm just going to give an off-the-cuff review of without... I've made about five points of notes, but I'm just going to kind of go with what comes out of my mouth this morning because I have a lot of feelings and reactions and I just want to purge. So yeah, one of the things that needs to come out of my mouth this morning is the name of the book and the author. I'm talking about the novel Fire Sermon by Jamie Quattro. The first thing I want to tell you is about a night in Toronto in the mid-1990s when I was living there when my best friend and I went to a performance of Tibetan monks performing a lot of their ritualistic music. All I remember is that it was beautiful, but more than that, how beautiful most of those young Tibetan monks were in their sleeveless monk outfits. And I remember trying to focus on the spirituality of the music, but all I could really think and feel about sitting in the audience was sexual energy. Mine, theirs, and wondering about, musing upon what kind of conflicts they might be experiencing in their own lives and their own bodies. Not knowing very much at that time or now about whether they were required to be celibate or what well, I know that uh, Buddhism isn't particularly gay positive and but I don't know much more than that okay so there was that and then immediately after the performance Jack and I walked down the street young street and wandered into a gay male stripper bar and plucked ourselves down and watched the performances there and I remember enjoying the performance <laughs> and not being able to stop thinking about the spiritual lives of these young men bearing all before me. And I've never forgotten that night because to me that's a quintessential paradox of my own life, of modern life, of many of our lives. And it was just a perfect representation of it. I remember going home and writing about that evening in my journal. I'd love to find that entry and reread it. But that experience was pulsating in the background as I read this novel. So this novel is about a middle-aged woman in a deeply satisfying marriage except for the sex part. I'm not sure everybody would agree with the deeply part but that's my read of her marriage. She has a loving husband and wonderful kids but she is not sexually satisfied and eventually she has an affair. No spoilers. If you know anything about this book, you know that's what it's about. Two more autobiographical points. I think 90% of religion and psychology, psychotherapy, 90% of it is bullshit. I don't want to judge anybody who's religious or who believes in psychology. I am a former psychotherapist and I come from a family of clergy. But there's 10% there that I would never try to poo-poo. So I come to this novel with that life experience and one of the powerful parts of this novel was the actual fire sermon. This woman writes a sermon. I don't know if we're meant to understand that she actually delivers it, but she certainly writes it. And if I was sitting in the audience or the congregation listening to this sermon, I would give it a standing ovation. It's a powerful piece of writing, it's a powerful piece of rhetoric about exactly what I was paradoxically reflecting on that night in Toronto years ago. The connections and the disconnections between sexuality and spirituality. It's, it's a wonderful document. It's a living, breathing document. But also because of my skepticism about religion, in particular, a way for me to begin to talk about my reaction to this novel is to say that if I heard that sermon and was moved by it and then got into some kind of a personal relationship, friendship with the orator of that sermon, the clergy who wrote it and delivered it so beautifully, so powerfully, inevitably, once I got to know that person, I would realize how much of the sermon was also bullshit. So once you get into the mess 
of people's real lives as they are lived, you realize how silly sermons are because they don't reflect the chaotic, lovely, tragic messes we all make of our lives as we fumble towards ecstasy. That reflects a lot of the problems I had with this book. Early in the novel, there's a wedding scene. We already know that the woman goes on to have a have an affair later, 20 years, 20 plus years later. But then we flash back to her wedding to Thomas. And I, once I realized it was going to be an extended wedding scene, I thought, oh, this is probably going to be an early bail for me. <laughs> but as I mentioned on a Friday read or two, that scene was one of the most uncliched, beautiful wedding scenes I've ever read in fiction, period. So then I realized, okay, no, this is actually going to be something special. And then, not many pages later, there's an incredibly emotionally compelling scene of how her husband Thomas demonstrates his love for her after the birth of one of her children. I've, I'm sorry, I don't remember which. She has an older girl and a younger boy, Tommy. There's something that he does that just shows the depth of his love for this woman, and it's, it's one of the most moving things I've ever read. That part of the story, the story of her family life, that's a five-star novel in this book. <laughs> Jamie Quattro writes about family life, the ins and outs of married life, in a way that, after a lifetime of reading, I would say breaks new ground, goes deeper, it shows that life, which is so different from my own, although I am getting married in a couple months, but it's a traditional family, and it's beautiful and richly complex, and the writing is just gorgeous. And then she has an aff the affair. You might say I'm judging her about having an affair. I don't think so. What I'm judging is that component, which is really the core of this novel, was badly written. I have to say that the guy that she has the affair with, I thought was a total fake jerk. And people will disagree with me on that. I'm going to point you towards some other reviews that you should check out. I couldn't understand what she saw in him. Supposedly he was a published poet. Who cares? And I hate when people put poetry in novels, so I didn't read any of the poetry, but who cares? I thought he was a phony, fake, manipulative jerk. And I loved her husband. Now, he was not innocent, and he certainly was a flawed character. But he's probably one of my favorite husbands slash fathers in literature, Thomas. But James... She just was completely smitten with him, and I could never understand why. Fine. But more than that, or somewhat less subjective than that, I just thought all of the writing about this love affair was subpar. There was emails, and the emotions of it were not much above YA high school simpering, much of it. I thought all of the this attempt to cloak it in some kind of a religious, there was a theological connection between them. Bullshit! It was all intellectual horseshit. Oh, poetry and Bible passages and C.S. Lewis. I hate read much of that. Considered bailing, glad I didn't. Because the ending of this novel is incredibly powerful and it was a circling back to her marriage and a moment of misunderstanding and vulnerability that again just devastated me i have to also add and this is also a major failing of this novel for me the sex that she has with james is some of the most badly written sex in literature i'm not saying that i needed to be titillated But there's an annual award for bad sex writing, and this book should win. It was awful writing. Now, the sex that she has with Thomas is just bad sex, so that's fine. But the other sex with James was supposed to be the best sex, the, 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 the real deal, and it was terribly written. There's one other moment near the beginning that also made me realize that this was a special book. And to me, this was far better than any other sexual stuff going on in the book. 
one of one of her I think it's her daughter's friend or she's no they're at a camp they're the resident managers of a summer camp or something and there's one preteen boy I think he's 10 or 11 and he tearfully confesses to her that the boys were having a circle jerk you know stat, I think you all know what that is I don't, I'm not going to explain it and that he enjoyed it he enjoyed being masturbated by by one of his buddies and he was really terrified and confused and she held him and he kind of sunk into her breasts as she held him and it was just this incredible scene that was far better than any of the other sexual stuff in the book. So Jamie Quattro is a deeply gifted writer. I will read probably anything else she writes unless it goes off into more of this theological territory which doesn't interest me. But she can't write about sex very well and the love affair was boring compared to the family life. So, a case could be made that I'm judging it from some conservative ideological perspective. I don't think so. I could tell you 20 more minutes of stories from my own life. I'm not conservative about any of this. I just didn't think that part of the book stood up. But what did, what was just brilliant, deeply moving fiction, makes me excited to see what she does next. But this was a mixed bag, but because of the powerful ending... I, it was still, uh, in spite of all of that, all of those reservations, and all that hate reading, this was a four-star read for me. And the last thing I want to say is, there is space in the reading experience to have some of the opinions that I do about not being religious. There, there is room for a secular reading of this book. So if you have your own idiosyncratic... <laughs> Uh, opinions about religion or psychology don't not read this but there will be parts of it that may be frustrating but what a what a wild ride she is a writer to watch and this was a complicated book for me have you read this book please uh, give me your comments i'm going to link below to a wonderful review by my friend kendra winchester who had a very different response to this book please check that out and if i can find it also, Eric Carl Anderson's. I think it was just in a wrap-up, but he's done a separate, longer review on his blog, Lonesome Reader. So there's, you're going to get as many responses to this book as there are readers. This was mine. Thanks for watching.